Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young here if you're new. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm really looking forward to showing you guys step by step how to paint this fantasy landscape. I'm working on an 11 by 14 black primed and stretched canvas. Um, I painted over a white canvas just using black, let it dry. I'm going to be using my number 30 filbert brush to apply the colors for the background. And I've got quite a few bright colors here. Uh, don't worry if you don't have any of these, you can use a regular orange, yellow, or magenta, pink, purple. Um, but if you want to follow along with my colors, I'll go over them now and I'll have a full list below the video in the description box. Titanium white, neon red, neon yellow, cool, neon rose, turquoise blue, and light blue violet. I'm going to go ahead and get my brush just a little bit wet. And I'm going to start by taking some white first. I'm going to start in the center at the top and just start by creating rays just white first fading out into that black get a little bit more water on your brush when you need to and reload right at the top of the canvas. We'll just go over and add a few extra bright ones. You can make some of them skinnier by turning your brush this way, just using the end of it. We want the main source of light to be right up here, and that's going to be the brightest part. So that's why I'm going to add more white there. Even after I come in with the colors, I'll probably go back and add a little bit more white. Okay, so... What I want to do next is take my blue turquoise without washing my brush off. I just have a little bit of water that I picked up on it and I'm going to start from the bottom, pull into those rays. A little bit more water and more paint. I'll continue on this side from the bottom, push and pull up. And we can follow up on the edge of the canvas too. The next color I'm going to take without washing my brush off is my rose. Continue to do the same thing, same technique, just pulling from the edge over part of the blue. Into the white. Letting those colors blend together. So see here where we've got a little bit more of the blue with the rose, it's creating some really pretty purple tones. I'm gonna go down to a smaller size filbert brush. This one is a number 12. I'll get this brush wet. I'll take a little bit of my blue violet and 
Then I'm going to start adding it above, a little bit higher, pulling and blending in with a turquoise blue and that rose. Take some more white, start from the top, making this brighter again before I dry this all off. Once I apply this next layer of white, that's what I'm going to do is dry this off and then I'm going to come in with my warmer colors, so my red and my yellow. And then just softly go back and forth around all these sun rays. Just softening a little bit of water on my brush. Okay, I'm going to dry this all off and then we'll come in with the next colors. Okay, I'm just going to lift this bar up can see where the bar was resting it's black so I'm going to paint that white and as I do this I'm going to add a little bit more so it doesn't look too chopped up you want it to look like it's all blending and flowing nicely Okay, so I'm going to be using yellow without washing my brush. I'm going to go back and forth like this. Take a little bit more and in some areas I'm just going to go right over and start layering over the blue and some of that rose. You want to have some water in your brush so just make sure that you do. That way you'll get more of a blended brush stroke and look to your painting. I'm going to add a little bit more before I come in with my red. You can bring it right down and overlap and bring it down as low as you want. blue is darker than the yellow so it's gonna it will dry darker than this and I'm gonna take my pink first and then I'll add the red after so I'm just loading both sides quite generously and I have a little bit of water in my brush so I'm just gonna start partially where I left off with the yellow and over it. So you can see just by going over, this is glazing or creating filters, going over the existing colors. Keep in mind, we dry them off. By doing this, we're creating more colors.
you can go right over your blue turquoise. All these colors layer very nicely over one another. You can't go wrong. They all look good together. Add a little bit in here. Okay, I'm going to take my yellow again and I'm going to layer over some more. So I'm going to add it right around the brightest areas. Next, red. Again, a little bit of water on my brush. I've washed out the yellow. And you can decide where you want to have your red. I like the way it looks in between the yellow. Well, even against the, the lime green, it's really pretty. Add a little bit right up here. Partially off the canvas here. I'm just going to soften this area here. And again. Come up top here with my white. From the top of the canvas, add more white. And pull some sun rays in. Now if you want yours to be wider, you can add wider ones. It's how you hold your brush, the size of the brush you use, the pressure you apply will all determine how wide they'll be. Take a little bit more yellow now. Create a little bit of orange in here by taking the yellow and playing it over where we have red or where we have some pink. Now I've got a lot of this turquoise left. I'm just going to come in here and gently pull up again. and play up on this color a little bit more now that it's this bottom portion is dry. like I need a little bit more pink and it's personal preference you can add as much or as little as you want okay, 
Okay, and I'll alternate over to my blue violet. And I think I'm gonna let that little mistake right there become my first tree. And I'm going to demonstrate two different brushes for painting trees. I've got a fan brush and I've also got a filbert brush, so I'll be using both. I've got this small zero fan brush, so we'll be tapping and I'll be showing you different ways to create branches with both of these. Here's a number 16. I may go down a couple sizes for some smaller trees like these along the edge. And what I'm going to do is let the direction and the angles of these sun rays guide me to where I need to place my trees and what angle they need to be on. So just take advantage of that and let that be your guide. So I'm going to mix all these colors in combination with a little bit of black. I'm going to get my fan brush wet and I'm going to mix my red, my pink, my blue turquoise. It's going to give me a really dark color, but also some color without just making it look really flat. Black can sometimes do that. And keep in mind this color we're making is going to dry even darker than this. But if you really like black, you're welcome to go ahead and use it. So here we've got our first tree trunk. And I'm just going to guide over it using the end of my brush. And you notice how I load the brush. Turn and pull. And if you want to make sure that your bristles fan out, then just give it a quick little wiggle like this. Okay, so I'm going to use the tip of my brush and just start tapping in. And then as I go down lower, I'm going to sort of change the direction of my brush and the pressure as well, making it appear like the tree's branches are getting bigger. And then again, just go back up, just using the very corner of my brush and pulling out a little tip to the top of the tree, the little tree top there. I'll add another one on this side. I personally prefer to use a, a filbert brush. And if you guys have been following me, my videos for a while, I mentioned that and you 99% of the time see me using a filbert brush for my trees. I feel like I have a little bit more control um, and make my trees look a little bit tidier, neat and tidier with the, the filbert brush. So I think I'll add one right here. I'm gonna just gently pull, sweep, and then let off. So I'll make it a little bit thicker right here. Let off to create that perspective, like we're laying down and we're looking up, or we're just standing in the forest looking right way up. That's the feeling that we want from this, this perspective. Okay, again, with the little end and then as we get lower down the tree, I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure. Load my brush up again, wiggle, tap, tap, tap. I'm never pulling and dragging, I'm lifting each time. I tap. I'm going to add a few little bits of moss and, and rocks and ground cover in here using this brush. Again, just pushing and tapping.
Now, just rinsing this brush out. Now I'm gonna switch over to my filbert brush and demonstrate for you how you can create trees using a filbert brush. And I have a larger one. I was going to use a 16, but I found my 14. I thought this one was missing. I'm gonna use my 14 because I think this is more of an appropriate size for this canvas and the trees that I'm painting. I'll get my brush a little bit wet. Always get your brush wet. Unless you're using really, really thin craft paints. I'm using heavy bodied acrylics today. So they need a little bit of a, a thinner. And I just use water because I have most control using that. So I'm just gonna, again, turn, pull to load and then get a little bit extra paint on the tip of my brush. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in Again, looking at these lines, right? Letting that be my guide. Adding another one, just a gentle pull and then sweep and let off with the tip of your brush only for the treetop. But see already, just by pushing and tapping side to side, look at the difference in, in the branches. This looks okay. And there are absolutely like different types of trees that look a little bit messier like that but I prefer and I just feel like it's more satisfying using the filbert brush it gives them such a nice um, shape and texture so I'm going to just continue adding these little trees and you could go up like all the way from here you know with your sun rays coming out this way you could it all depends on sort of how how trippy or how dramatic you want your um perspective to be i'm going to tap in a little bit more down here so it kind of scoops down like this kind of this shape, but I'm tapping to make that shape. So it looks like foliage. I'm gonna get a little bit of water on my brush just to release some of that paint out. And I think I'll add oh, another one right here. And I'll come in, ooh, maybe right about here. I'm just gonna go back over my tree trunk. It's sort of invisible. Just floating branches with no tree trunk. So by adding, using a little bit of white, but my other, or using a little bit of black and my other colors gives more of a, a softer edge to the silhouette of trees that we have here. I personally like that better, but you definitely can stick to just using black only if you want. It really is one of those individual personal things. Everyone's different and each painting we do can can make us want to use a little bit more black here and there so sometimes I do use a little bit more black um, well and I'm, I'm painting on a black canvas today so there's already a lot of black in this and that helps create that pop of color and contrast so I'm gonna add I'm going to make these ones shorter down here. Again, just little tap, tap, taps. A little bit more pressure as we get down lower.
and a little bit less on an angle because the sun rays are starting to come down here now. So we don't need to be as dramatic as the other ones towards the top. And I'm just adding a little bit more blue turquoise tinted with my black. Now, even though I'm painting these smaller trees, I'm still using this decent size number 14 brush, but I've got lots of smaller filbert brushes, so you can get I recommend looking for the sets that you can find online. You can get like quite a few different sizes in a whole set and that's going to save you some money and it's really nice to have the selection. I'm going to pull in with a clean brush. Make sure you have all that black out of there. I'm going to use some white and right down here, partially over some of the other colors. And I'm going to take a little bit of my blue violet, a little bit of a little bit of turquoise, wiggle, wiggle, kind of get my filbert nice and flat like this, and make it seem like there's waterfalls. Now I need to pick up my canvas and gently pull it out like this so that I can come right right down here so it feels like these waterfalls are just coming and dropping down way down here into a flowing river that we can't see but that's what I'm imagining so this is going to dry a little bit darker and it'll be a really nice addition to this painting. So we've got the beautiful trees, the rays, all these wonderful colors, and then this cascading waterfall. So you can take a little bit more white if you want. Wiggle, wiggle, pull and drop. so many different videos I have on showing you guys easier ways of painting waterfalls. Got lots of tricks and tips for you. Rinsing my brush right off. I'm going to really lightly catch where I started where the paint's just right here and have that fade into the sun rays. A little bit more white. And I recommend drying your painting off or waiting till it's dry um, and, and deciding because it's going to dry darker, especially working on a black canvas. So you're going to want to dry it off and then look and see. It's taking a little bit more of my blue turquoise and white because this is drying really, really dark. It makes for a nice vignette, but I still want to see some colors. I want the darkest parts to be my trees. So you can come back after and add a little bit more color to the edges if it's too dark and if anything's too light then you can add 
um, more of the colors and go over and saturate that a little bit more. So right down here, just taking a little bit more of my uh, blue turquoise. And I think this just has a very nice vibe and dramatic perspective. I'm enjoying painting this one so much. I have a few videos from when I first started my channel that have more of a galaxy, nebula, um, and northern lights feel to them. So I've got some tutorials if you want to look back a few years, depending on when you're watching this. I think I started my channel in 2018, and uh, right now it's 2022. So be sure to have a look through, and I've got lots of playlists too, so I've got a playlist that's all about Northern Lights specifically and um, Galaxy Skies, and I've got a playlist for beginners in acrylic where I've got loads of material tips and tricks for you guys, um, fantasy playlists, portraits, animals, everything. So uh, if you're just starting out painting or if you're intermediate, uh, I've got lots to show you, and I love to teach. So feel free to look through. I'm adding a little bit of black just right over this spot here and a few of these branches. Because see, I was adding that tinted black over top of a dark area. So it doesn't show up as much as I want it to. So I know that I need to add and use more black right here so it shows up. And that way my color will too in the background You don't have to necessarily add it to add the black to all your trees. Just a few spots. Like maybe just a little bit. Notice how I'm just pulling a little bit of the black and then wiggling. That gives me that shape that I need for my trees to give me more control with my tapping and, and brush stroke. So by adding a few more branches here that come out just a little bit closer to the center, what I'm doing is setting that waterfall back a little further. So you can also decide if you want your waterfall to be coming out in front by keeping your trees back and the water in front of those branches, or like I've done here, put that waterfall back a little bit further by adding some branches in front of it. I think both ways look nice. I just like to show you guys a lot of different um, techniques and ideas for when you're creating your landscapes, just to give you something to think about and an alternative. So you can just keep adding and adding, layering your waterfalls, deciding if you want them to be a lot busier, but in keeping the smaller, oh, keeping with the perspective. So small, small, small wiggles and then drop and pull and making it wider. And that's the same with the trees, small and then it gets bigger and bigger. and then just soften. Now I'd like to add a few little birds. I'm gonna use one of my smallest liner brushes I have. This is a number two. I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet and I think I'm just gonna take a little bit of my blue violet. I think there's a little bit of this. Yeah, we can add a little bit of that charcoal color. because the sky is really light there, so we don't really need to use straight black. So I'm just gonna do these simple little V shapes, kind of exaggerate sometimes, a little bit of a curve. I 
I really love birds and I like to incorporate them uh, in my paintings. But you can decide. And then just smaller, smaller. You can decide how many you want to add, if any. <laughs> it's up to you. And if you want to make it look like they have a little highlight on them, just take a little bit of white. Maybe the sun rays are hitting them a little bit, so you could just add a little bit of white on the top of the wings. gonna add a bigger one right there just felt like I needed to I trust my my gut and I've learned over the years that that's how we grow we need to when we get those ideas we need to go for them and if, and if it doesn't work out at least we try but I'll tell you 99% of the time it'll work in your favor Okay, well, I've really enjoyed working on this. I'm so glad I got to share it with you guys. Thanks for being here and uh, watching this. If you'd like to paint along, go ahead and share yours uh, with us on our Facebook group. I'll have a link below this video for that as well. And I've also got Patreon where you can sign up for as little as $5 a month. That unlocks a lot of videos um, with exclusive content and longer videos. You gain early access as well. Um, and... Have a wonderful day. Thanks again for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and make sure you tap the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my new videos. So you'll get a reminder if you tap that little bell. See you all soon in another video. Take care, everybody. Bye.